Welcome to Rational Alchemy. Today we're going to be talking about photography, a rather special kind of photography. I'm joined today in the studio by Bob Razinski. Bob, welcome to the Captain's Lounge. Hi, Nigel. Thank you for inviting me. It's kind of interesting because you, you, you are doing something that not a lot of people probably would appreciate. <laughs> Why don't we talk a little bit about the concept that you came up with okay. and uh, show us some of your work. Okay, great, thanks. Well, this is my latest series and I've been working on it for a couple years. It started before COVID hit the scene. So I got this idea to make pictures of uh, UFOs. <laughs> and uh, I just thought it would be fun, you know, sort of a tribute or a tip of the hat to B-movies from the 1950s. Nice. Uh, loved the old, all the uh, Cold War stuff going on in the yep. 50s, you know, all the fears and paranoia. But it, there's a certain kitschness about it when you look, when I look back on it. So I thought it would be fun to just throw these UFOs <laughs> into the pictures. Uh, I draw the UFOs by hand on a tablet, then merge them yeah. in, with the photo and software and print them out. Okay, so why don't we talk about the first one we have on display here. Now, obviously you do all of the, shall we call it background aspect of the photograph, which is the main scene. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so everything we're looking at is 100% your work. Oh, yeah. Some are digital, but some are also film. Well, most of the UFO pictures are film. I did that for because I wanted the stuff to look like it was from the 50s. Right. And well, I, I can understand that. Yeah, and I just couldn't get the look with digital. This is, I, I love this image. It's got a lot of gray tone, nice tonality in it, mm -hmm. but it's still a little bit too clean, too smooth, too refined. And again, I like the idea of this imaginary person yep. walking around with a camera, and he likes to hike and, and just walk around, and occasionally he comes upon a UFO, usually when he's setting up a scene that he likes, and then, oh my gosh, look what just flew into the frame. Click. Click. And it's a silly uh, precept, but, you know... Silly is good. No, I, I, I like <laughs> it. I, I really like it because, I mean, you, you are keeping the conspiracy theorists going now. You know, what's really interesting, Nigel, is I, an article of mine got published last May um, highlighting some of the UFO pictures. And I got a lot of hits from the UK. Mm -hmm. and I should be marketing these fine art prints to the UK. Yes. Warminster. Uh, which is in the south of England, uh -huh. is our most famous UFO spotting place. Is that where the, 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 the drawings on the the farm drawings, the circle drawings, that, no. yeah, the pub guys, <laughs> that we yes. have a few no. and they go out and do no. circles in the, in the corn See, fields? The, the thing that you have to understand about the UK is, is it's a damn small country. Yeah. So everything's close together. Yeah. So it's, it's very difficult. Now, Warminster's probably about 20 miles away from Stonehenge, uh -huh. to give you an idea. Oh, sure. So, yeah, but Warminster's famous for its UFO sightings. Oh. Of course, it's never been proven that there are actually aliens, because people do tend to forget UFO, unidentified flying object. Yes. However, it's... I know if we move on to your next picture. Mm -hmm. Just to give you a little background on this, this was shot on film. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was a square negative. So I like the square format. It's my favorite format. Okay. You're not committing to hor to landscape or portrait. Right. Horizontal or vertical as our generation uh, yep. used to specify. So I'm out there and shooting this, and I wanted a color shot. Mm -hmm. So I've been playing around with 19th century color photography techniques. Ah, out come the colored filters. Yeah, so I had a red filter, a green filter, and a blue filter. Ah. And I shot each frame through the appropriate through, filter. Yep. So I had all the color information stored monochrome, and I was able to recombine that in Photoshop and build a full color image. Sad thing about it is it came out great, but it's a monochrome <laughs> color, <laughs> it's all blue. <laughs> it draws your eye to the center. Oh, thanks. It really does. Thanks. This is called optic, because there's like oh, a, yes. the UFO's like I can projecting see that. light. I can yeah. see that. Yeah. And people say, well, 
what what is that? And I say it's a beam. Well, what kind of beam? I don't know. It's a beam. How would I know what kind yeah. of beam an extraterrestrial? They craft didn't tell is? me. No, they didn't <laughs> tell me. But this has been a very popular print. I've sold uh, quite a few. Excellent, yeah. excellent. This yeah. is pandemic. Ah, There's certainly a lot of panic in the air during the early days. Oh yes, of the, sh the shouldering in. So I started thinking about ominous things coming from the sky and COVID, you know, being an airborne virus mm -hmm. spread through the air, it seemed like, well, UFOs, yep. COVID from the air. So um, this is kind of this <coughs> innocent scene of a couple people fishing. And uh, oh, this UFO is just strangely appears in the scene. What's it going to do? There's a certain bit of suspense, I You're think, in kidding. that picture. I also like the way that you've designed the UFO in this one because it's, 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 it's not your standard. I particularly like, I call that the crown. Oh, okay. It's kind of like sense. a crown That makes style. sense. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And actually, that's a day for night picture that was shot in broad daylight. Loving cinema. Yes. I've been wanting to do a lot of day for night shots, and that was my first foray into it. Yeah, I, I often tell people it's far easier to take a bright photograph and make it dark than it ever is to take a dark photograph and try and make it light. It's just one of the little tricks that we play. Yeah, definitely. And of course, if you see the old cowboy movies, when you see them riding at night, yeah. you know damn well it's in the middle of the day they oh, put yeah. a filter on. Well, even in a lot of film noir movies, you know, yeah. there's day for night techniques. Yes. And, uh, so, let's move on a little bit. Yeah, sure. More. Okay. Invasion Progress. of the Body Snatchers. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> this is called Boulder County Field. Most of these were shot in Boulder County. Oh, okay. Yeah, a few in Jeff County yes. and, and a few in uh, Larimer. But Colorado is such a great, fertile place to take these kinds of pictures, especially, you know, being in Longmont. Yes. Because I'm on the edge of the prairie and on the edge of yes. the mountains. So there's a lot of geography to choose right. from. As go east, go west. Yeah, 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 yeah. The only thing we really don't have here is the ocean, but. What made you decide to now go with three? I like three. Okay. You know, four, when you go with even numbers, it looks a little too uh, contrived, I think. Okay. The you're always bit, playing bit around with the expectation or, yeah. of symmetry, especially with depth. Uh, not so much in this shot, but you know, you could have one flying saucer really small. Yes. And then one a little bigger, and then one a little bigger, and that gives you nice spatial relationships. And you can get a nice ground figure you right. know, separation. What's impressing me the most is the fact, is the way that you have done the art of the UFOs themselves. Mm. Because if I tried to do that, we would have a mess. <laughs> well, I went to I art school. <laughs> <laughs> I actually went to art school. Ooh. So this, this is my latest one, and it's called Midday Abduction. Or maybe it's daytime abduction. Anyway, uh, I haven't issued this yet. These are all uh, one of 25 okay. editions. Okay, yeah. Signed, numbered, and uh, this is kind of a, a, a test print, an artist proof, you might say. But I really am interested now in having some form of encounter. Yes. And so here we have two people sitting on a park bench, and the UFO is beaming them up or down or mm -hmm. doing something, something with their DNA. God only that's knows. That's Golden Ponds. No, that's no, it's uh, not. Pella Crossing. Ah, okay. Yeah, I love Pella Crossing. Yes. It's great. I love Golden Ponds. I do too. My wife goes there and walks the dog just yeah. about every day. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's the latest. So the one that's going to come after this is going to be my first alien okay. picture. And I'm thinking of modeling the alien off of Mark Zuckerberg's face. Because I, I don't think you'd be modeling an alien. I think you'd be reproducing an alien. Ah. <laughs> well, that's debatable. <laughs> but I like the hairdo, you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, it won't be so obvious where, you know, I might get in trouble. Right. But certainly that's the inspiration. Oh, I, I don't think you'd possibly get in trouble <laughs> unless you did something really crazy. Because he's a public figure. Yes, he is a public figure. And he's, so, yeah. He, right, all his... I mean, uh, the number of times he's been in Congress trying to explain what Facebook's doing, trust me, he is a public figure. He is a public figure. Yes. Or a disfigure, I don't know. <laughs> Not a real fan. Uh, See, I what, I li what I like about this, and, it, and, and you, you don't sort of notice it, but it, it's, the, it's the, like a shadow of, of the UFO moving into position, like it was very, very fast. Well, motion is something that I am trying to convey in some of these images. Yes. And conveying motion in a still image is difficult. Is all, 
Well, it depends. I mean, it's easy to take a picture of a plane and the contrail, a jet and the contrail, and you, right. you expect, you yes. Know, oh yes, it's moving, that's why there's a contrail there. Uh, but making a UFO look convincing. <laughs> yes. It's, it's a game yes. of imagination. I really like that. Picture. Oh, thank that's, you. That's beautiful. I like anyway. the bucolic setting. You know, it's yeah. very bucolic, and then there's this ominous, I like that tension. Yes. So what I do is I, I shoot the backgrounds first. Yes. And now I'm liking the background so much, I'm wondering if I need to put you close enough. Like, you know, I love this for what it is. This, yep. It's probably hard to pick this up on camera, but it was a really windy day. So that yep. t that's a tenacious tree. You know? See, and you could say there is a UFO in that picture. Yes. Unfortunately, it went behind yeah, the tree. Yeah, it went behind the tree. I was, yeah, yeah, it was a little too late or too early. Uh, so that, that's been an issue. Coming up with these backgrounds that I love, this is the sugar uh, yes. refinery here uh, in uh, Longmont. And uh, I, I rarely cheat, but in this case, I did remove the uh, structures on top of the silos. Right. You know, because that wanted, makes sense. And I, I do think I'll put UFOs in that. That deserves one. You know. Yeah. See, I'm I'm really appreciating looking at high quality prints. Oh, thank you. Because I believe it's the only way to ever look at a good photograph. Well, I take a lot of pride in craftsmanship, and. Um, I learned how to print really young. I, I, mm -hmm. I had this great instructor uh, in Omaha, Nebraska, and um, he offered these courses on Saturday afternoons. Right. And he taught me how to make a good, good print. print. Well, Bob, now that we've talked about your incredible artwork, yeah. why don't we talk a little bit about the equipment okay. that, you, that you actually use? So well, you, you brought along three different cameras here. Yeah. So why don't you give us a brief overview? Okay, well this is digital, that's film, and this is film. Okay. My latest acquisition, I think this is a 1989 Hasselblad. And I like the camera because it gives me a nice big negative. Yes. So I can blow these things. What, what, what size is the, uh, is the uh, neg on that one? Uh, it takes 120 film, oh, okay. six by six centimeters. Yeah. It's about like that big. Okay. And 35 millimeter is about like that big. Yeah. And this digital sensor is about the you know, size of maybe Seize, yes. a couple, of, maybe a thumbnail and a half. Right. And that's probably the highest resolution. Mm-hmm. But it's not all about resolution. No. And no. a lot of, well, I don't want to go down that road, but a lot of people confuse megapixels with uh, quality. Yes, and, and that, that's, that's the wrong way to look at it. Absolutely. As, as I explain to people, it's all, first off, it's not what's behind the camera, it's what's in front of the camera. And if you've got good glass, mm -hmm. that is gonna do a lot mm -hmm. to improve the quality of the image. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's really why I went to the hassle. Oh, absolutely. Uh, most of these shots, this is a recent purchase. Um, and most of my square shots, and I love that format, were shot with uh, a 60-year-old Rolly cord camera. Oh, wow. It's very much like your Yashica over there, but it's got, and it's not a Roloflex, it's a Rolly cord. It's the economy yes. version of a Roloflex. So the lens, it is not as good as this lens. Mm -hmm. And I wanted something with a little bit better uh, characteristics as far as contrast and sharpness. So I went with the, I went yes. with the Hasselblad for that reason. Well, Hasselblad is, a, is such a superb camera. It's fun to shoot with it. As far as I'm aware, it's the only camera that's been to the moon, Hasselblad. I think you're on right. The, on the yeah. Apollo missions. Yeah, yeah. And they have uh, reissued many commemorative cameras. Oh, yes. <laughs> they go for <laughs> mucho dinero. Uh, yes. Uh, they're, this prob is, they're probably designing one right now for the uh, the moon missions coming up. Yeah, and who knows? Uh, Fifty years from now, they'll have a Mars camera, or That's maybe true. twenty years. From, I won't be around. I'd like to be around, but you're right. <laughs> I'm not going to be around. <laughs> no, I'm not be around. <laughs> uh, but I've shot with just about every type of camera. Mm -hmm. By the time I graduated high school, I mean, I, I had shot four by five, eight by ten, two and a quarter, thirty-five, six by seven. Be, you know, I worked part-time jobs and everything went towards cameras. Right. So. See, I, I, I started off with a Pentax mm -hmm. uh, when I was 14, given to me by my grandmother. Yeah. Uh, I then went and uh, worked in Norway. Mm -hmm. 
Why Norway, you ask? It's a long story. <laughs> and I, I spotted this Canon F1 sitting in a camera shop. Mm -hmm. So I ended up buying the, uh, the Canon F1 and, and some of the accessories that go yeah. with it, and I have never bought another manufacturer because I like what Canon does. Okay. So they, you're, they, you're loyal to the brand, so and I'm they've really, earned your loyalty. And, 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 yeah. and ironically, I'm not like that. I've had more makes of cars mm -hmm. than there are hot dinners lined up at the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I, 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 do, I am not a brand loyal person. Huh. Interesting. Except when it comes to my camera. That's really and interesting. They've never let me down. Well, that's interesting because I'm totally agnostic when it comes to cameras. Yeah. Uh, just in the last 15 years, I think I've gone through a Canon 5D. Mm -hmm. And then I replaced that with a Nikon uh, a D800, I think. It was a full frame, 36 megapixel camera. Never liked the color out of that thing. And then I went to Sony's. Right. And I've been with Sony since, oh gosh, maybe 2016? No, 2012. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It just works for me, and I've collected right. lenses. As, as we are talking these old cameras, yeah. there's, there's one thing that we, you know, these cameras yeah. require except the Sony. What do you think those are? Well... It doesn't have autofocus. True. <laughs> it doesn't have auto exposure. Doesn't doesn't the, don't don't these funny things have to? They have something that sort of rolls up very tight. Film. 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 And of course, um, light meter. That's a nice light accessory. Meter. It is a nice accessory. I mean, actually, you, to be fair, yeah. Even when using fully digital, light meter is good to have. Well, I use the histogram. Yes. Which is. A light meter yeah. of sorts. Do you have a light meter with you? Yes, I do. In fact, okay. I, just, I just got this guy. I mean, not many people know what these are. Yeah, well, they read light. Uh, this one will read flash. Mm -hmm. So if you're using strobes in the studio, and it'll also read reflective light. Nice. So let me turn this on, and I'll tell you what we'd be taking a picture at with ISO 100 film. <laughs> uh, at F. Point five mm -hmm. <laughs> at 125th of a second. Well, that's not practical, so we could go to a quarter of a second at f11. Right. Yeah. There but, you go. But, you know, I had a, an instructor when I was in graduate school, and I was taking a, 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 a cinema verite class, uh, you know, taking films from life as, as it happens. Yeah. And the instructor was fantastic, Richard Leacock. Uh, he was a pretty well known documentary filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he would always tout that you don't need a light meter. There are only 12 basic exposures. And if you're su shooting cine, you know, in the Arctic, yeah, you know, especially black and white. Absolutely. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of latitude. But what I found is um, I wanted to be really consistent. You know, I can eyeball something and mm -hmm. come within an f-stop of what the meter, but that f-stop is significant. Oh, yes. It Very can make or so. break a picture. And, and so that people understand this, the f-stop is, is how big the, the aperture, aperture is going to be. Yes. And this controls your depth of field. Yeah, I, you know, I taught photography. I uh, used to teach at a college down south. And one of the things I would do to introduce students to the concept of depth of field is I would say, hold a finger, like your index finger, about a foot from your eye and focus on the background. You're in perfect focus, but my finger is blurry. Now, if I make a little tiny hole <laughs> like that, my finger is razor sharp and your face is razor sharp because I'm viewing the scene right. through a small hole. Through a very small aperture. Yeah. Yes. So that is a good demonstration of So that must have been your, uh, your pinhole thumb. Yes. Oh, I did a lot of work with pinhole cameras. I too. played with those as well. They're they, great. they are so much fun. Oh, I love camera obscura, pinhole yeah. cameras. Yeah. I've always loved photography. Ever since I was a little kid, I don't know why, I, I had a toy camera when I was like three or four. Wow. You'd press yep. the shutter and then you'd pull out like, oh, like there's a, little, like, there a roll of paper in there and uh, okay. different drawings and pictures. <laughs> I loved that toy. Then I had a little projector for film strips. Yeah. I don't know. If, oh, what, I remember those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a really bright little projection book. I used to hold that thing and show the movie so it project right onto my retina. Crazy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, I was just always fascinated with the light. Yes. And uh, here's another kind of odd story. The phenomenon of light, or 
all the phenomena, phenomena associated with light has always just captured my imagination and interest. As a little boy, I shared a bedroom with my brother and we had curtains. Mm -hmm. And the street, it wasn't real busy, but it was busy enough so that there was a stream of traffic. And I'd look up at the ceiling and you could see projections. Right. Fuzzy projections of the cars going in the opposite direction. Yep. Because, you know, optics flip and yep. invert. And that was sort of an awakening. And I remember lying in bed one morning, it was like seven o'clock, and the cars are going by. I said to my brother, that's a green car that went down the street. That's a blue car. You want to bet? <laughs> How much did you make? Uh, probably 10 cents. He, he was a welcher. Well, it's been really wonderful having you come into the studio oh, to talk thanks, about Nigel. your work, talk about your cameras, mm -hmm. especially your art. Oh, I thanks. still love that. I still love that print. I think that's a beautiful print. Oh, thank you. That was a show about photography. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.